I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's 6.30. Um, and I'm going to proceed to additions to the agenda. Do we have any? Not for me. Judith doesn't have any. Carl, Judith? No, none for me. Okay. Um, review of minutes, January 24th. And we have the minutes, of, I have the minutes in front of me. They look great. Move to approve. Um, I would second uh, Judith Dillon, select board member appearing remotely. Okay. Uh, we have a second on the minute that Carl made. Carl made a motion to approve the minutes. Um, Jude, I, I second. I was just also identifying myself, Judith Dillon, select yeah. board member appearing yeah. remotely. I second approval of the minutes. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. The minutes are approved. Um, public comment. Okay. So. We're slightly early for our open forum, but we do have people here, it looks like, that would like to comment on our at the forum. So we'll definitely move to open up that article, open forum on 2022 town meeting warning articles and other items of interest to town residents. Um, so here we go. I see Ty is. You, can you hear me, Ty? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Were you here to um, ask questions or other items of interest on the town warning? I was here just to, if to answer any questions, if there was anything on the warning for or a discussion piece that came up about the request to purchase a new truck right. with the select board support from Callis and East Montpelier. Yeah, thank you for um, tuning in because that's important. Um, but we don't have anybody in yet asking any questions, but sure. should, we, should we just wait? Because we are a few minutes early. Yeah, that's fine with me. We can wait until you get some other people on or see if people are coming even. Right. Yep. I see Paul. Hi, Amy. We started without you. I am so sorry. This is, I have and it just it is not doing Zoom. So I have to I, I will do this from now. I just revert back to the old computer. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. We didn't do much. Okay. <laughs> we approved the minutes, but we we're waiting for it to do important things so you tuned in. Okay. Yeah. So now we're in our open forum. So we have Paul. Paul, are you um, here to ask questions on the on the forum? Oh, John Jewett came to tune in. <laughs> so John, good to see you. We started the meeting without you. We dare to. And we approved the minutes, but we held off on doing anything else because, of course, your highness wasn't here yet. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course. You and Amy were a little bit late. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell it like it is. <laughs> so now we're in our open forum. Um, so if anyone is here and wants to ask questions, we're here to answer them. What's our plan if we get no questions? Do we wait around until the time of the next agenda item on the agenda or do we plow forward? <clears throat> well, maybe we can do something and then we can, you know, do one of our items. And then, of course, if someone tunes in, we'll get the item done and then go to questions, right? Okay. Who's 
Paul. So can you hear me, Paul? Oh, I can't hear Paul. You're muted. He's muted. He's he's moving his lips. <laughs> that that's Paul Guerre from the fire department. Okay, Paul. We I thought maybe you had questions, but you're here to answer some questions. There we go. I got it. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, just to let you know, Seth, it is very cold out in Florida. <laughs> I'm not in Florida. <laughs> you were, were you in Florida? I am, and it's cold down here. I know. I I was just down there, but the three of the days I was down there was really nice. It was in the 70s, but yeah, it's supposed to start warming up tomorrow, so I'll, I'll be happy. Yeah, great. Okay, yeah. well, it's a lot colder in Vermont, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> it's like eight degrees. <laughs> Thank and you. Like, yeah. Um, okay, so let's move to an item just because I think on um, the resilient, I don't think they're all here S though. Seth, why don't you skip that one and go to the treasurer report? Okay, good idea. Number E is the town treasurer report. But don't, is Don going to present? He isn't. Report? No. Okay. okay, so we have it to look at. Yes. So select board members, let's look at the town treasurer report. And I'm looking through, is it the general ledger that we're supposed to be looking at? Yeah. It's Maybe. the colorful one. <laughs> the colorful one? Yeah. 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 All right, yep. I see it. There's multiple pages with lots of figures. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So there's nothing in there that caused Don to have any concerns, if that helps. Yeah. So I see lots of figures, town checking account. The balance looks pretty healthy. I wish mine looked like that. Does anybody have any concerns with the first page? How to be monthly account? No. 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 Me either. It looks healthy. Going to the next page is the balance sheet. So we have assets listed. We have the money that's in the checking account. Um, we have our fund balance. Anybody see anything there that is concerned with? Um, I'm basically killing time here and pretending I'm knowing what I'm looking at. But um, so the miscellaneous trust fund that looks good. We have a good, healthy account in the capital reserve. Uh, I don't see anything there of concern, like status quo to me. And then the next page, general ledger. Oh, restoration got money in it. I don't see anything there. Does anybody see anything? When I'm, I'm just going through the pages. Uh, wow, got a lot of pages there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. General fund. So the budget's showing about altogether about fifty-two percent expenditure. That's that's normal. That's yep. normal, exactly. It's all right in there. Everything seems pretty good. You know, there's nothing out of line. Anything that would be more than that is probably something we have to pay twice or four times a year or something like that. Right. Yep. Yep. So I'm I'm content to ask Bruce to convey our thanks to Don for this monthly report. Okay. The monthly report looks good to me. So we're gonna get done with that item. No one else has any, has any uh, so that's the town treasure report is done. Thank you, Don. Um, so do I see anybody tuning in? Nope. 
What about the consideration of CAI technology tax max maintenance contract? That's a pretty quick item. That's item F. Uh, Did the amount go up this year? Nope. Oh, it's the exact same as the last two years. Do you need a motion to approve it? A motion to approve it and authorize me to sign it. Make a motion to approve the CIA uh, tax mapping proposal for the town of East Montclair and, um, author and have the board authorize the town administrator, Bruce Johnson, to sign it. I will second a motion to approve the CAI tax map oh. maintenance contract. I thought it was CIA. I want nothing to do with the CIA. <laughs> Can we get them involved if we want them to, though? Well, the culinary. Hey, man, they're, on, right? they're, they're probably already mapping for us, but we don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's it. already mapped. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of money. Or are there maps? We have a motion and we also have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes, it's unanimous. The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. It takes care of F. Um, okay. Are there any town residents that I'm missing here that are anxious to ask questions? I don't see anybody. Um, how about consideration? How about G? Consideration of certificate of no appeal or suit pending for 2021 grand list. Can you explain what that means, Bruce? <laughs> It pretty much says it in the title that there was no BCA hearings last summer. There were no appeals of the BCA hearings and no other action at the state level regarding our grand list. So we're through that period clean. And this is a certification that gets put in with the tax book on an annual basis, if it's true. I uh, move to uh, authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the board, the certification that there are no uh, appeals or suits pending for the 2021 grand list. Could I, could I actually just ask a question? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Um, whose signatures are they that are indicated on that form? I just can't read them. So I'm just wondering who. It, who it's Ross. That. Yeah. Okay. That's Ross Hazel and Chris Racanelli, the two remaining listers. Okay. So they actually were the ones who confirmed that there are no appeals pending. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, so I believe we made, somebody made a motion and there's a second on that? I'll second it. Thank you, Judith. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. We have passed the certificate of no appeal. Let's G. Um, I'm still looking for town residents. I don't see any. Um, we might as well go to, what's that? We might as well go to H. Well, just a um, uh, point, point of order. When you talk about town residents, I mean, I think members of the press who don't live in the town would be welcome to ask questions as well, correct? Um, sure. It says to town residents in the notice here, but if you want the press to ask questions, I'm sure they could without being censored by the East Mountain Police Yeah. So, I just want to make sure that it's clear to the press that they are welcome to ask questions. Yeah, I was just reading the item which said to sure. town. So. Sure. Okay. Okay. So um, I think that I don't see any additional town residents on the Zoom meeting that are going to ask questions. So I move that I, I think that we should go to H, which is discussion on town management in light of COVID 19. Um, anybody have anything to discuss? about the mask mandate each month there? Um, I think that perhaps we should keep it uh, at least until um, after town meeting day and then revisit it again. Um, but I think we should have the mask mandate through town meeting at least to you know ensure that 
poll workers are protected, people who are voting are protected. Um, it, it doesn't hurt, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like I, I feel the same way. Does anybody else have any comments about the mass mandate? I think uh, extending it another 30 days is appropriate. Um, as for uh, town meeting day and protecting poll workers, the Board of Civil Authority already decided that everybody who works the election uh, will not only wear a mask, but will be vaccinated and boosted. Um, and the BCA also discussed that, uh, uh, that we aren't allowed to keep prevent people from voting if uh, they don't want to wear a mask in, uh, but we will make every effort to uh, help them vote outside um, <laughs> and not come in so they can comply with the mask mandate and, and vote. Or of course, you know, mail-in ballots are, are an option and everyone's been mailed the, the town and school ballots. Yeah. Any further comments on the mask mandate? I move to, to extend it for 30 days. You have a second on that? I'll second it. John seconds it. Uh, any further discussion about the mass meeting? I think it's better off to suspend it and go with flow. At least the perception is we're doing something. That's all good. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it as you have it. That takes care of H. Actually, on, I have another piece of business related to H. Um, Okay. So, somehow, for our last select board meeting, it was decided in a way that I'm not familiar with to not have an option to uh, come in and participate in the meeting in the town office. And according to the wording on uh, the wording on the website, that seems to be the case for today, also. Okay. And uh, that puzzled me. I thought that was the sort of thing the select board decided. Uh, so, wondering where that came from. That's a good question, Carl, because I saw the same thing. But then I'm like, well, I should go in. And I'm like, somebody's got to sign the warrant. So I came in. Okay. So, so uh, I will explain where that came from, Mr. Chair, since you're the one that made that decision, just so you remember. Okay. Uh, it's your call. You yeah. made it two meetings ago. <laughs> oh. uh, Carl just fortuitously showed up at the last one, which was nice because we needed somebody. Yeah. And now that you're back from Florida, you're doing your normal thing. But right. we had decided oh. to, uh, to go with that all remote meeting. Okay, so I must, have done that. Well, I must have done that inadvertently because I certainly didn't mean to do that. Okay. So, um, so throw your town administrator under the bus, buddy. <laughs> well, okay, so I'll take the responsibility because I'm not feeling that that's that big a deal to say that. Um, but can we unsay it? Because I do, I do feel that um, having people come in in person is a valuable option. Yeah. Yes. How does that sound, Bruce? It's up to you guys. Okay, I think we need to unsay it. Does, does everyone feel the same way? So, so next, I mean, I would like to go back to the way that we had it, where we have the option of zooming in. Members of the public have options of, of zooming in, uh, but uh, we also, as a select board, can show up at the town meeting, off, town office, and if people want to come, they can do that too. I thought that the, 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 the people participating that were not on select board were not invited to come into the office right now. That seems to be the way it is, right? Yeah, I thought it was just select board, but. Is that an option for us to have a meeting where we are in person and everybody else comes in via Zoom? I don't know how that works legally. So I, I will give you my take on it. I don't think it is an option. Okay. I don't think it should be an option. And I don't think that's the way the the um, allowance to allow you to do remote meetings only is phrased in the statute that just uh, got passed, uh, the oh. act that just got passed. Yeah. But I would say for the next meeting, I would ask you to keep it the way it is because the next meeting runs right into the town forum and right. we do not want to get into that particular discussion. Yeah, so we'll just leave it the way it is for that. 
for the next that meeting. makes sense. Okay, that work okay for everybody? I think you're right. So, so wait, let, let's be clear, we're all on the same page. Yeah. Uh, leave it the way it is, meaning next meeting, we will not have the option of coming into the town office. It will be entirely remote. And the reason for that is it's a town forum. We're encouraging a lot of people to come out and uh, we would like to encourage them to come out via Zoom. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. It's also the way it's worn. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Good. And then after that, we can evaluate, hopefully go back to allowing in person. Well, can, can we decide right now that after that, we're going to allow the in-person attendance uh, unless we change our mind and decide otherwise? Well, I'm just being cautious about, you know, COVID numbers. Yep. Okay. I'm just, I just think that going by the data, data is the most valuable way we can go forward. So we just need to assess that at that time. You know, if we're having 1,500 cases a day, we're not going to want to do that. But if we're yep. having couple hundred a day or less, then we're certainly feeling better about uh, opening up the meetings. Okay, so talk about it again next time. Yeah. We always do. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Good question, though. Because I had the same one. So it's like, hmm. yeah. But I guess I approved it, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Responsibility. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we have 10 minutes to seven. Where does that put us on our forum? Uh, so, so you get another 20 minutes. Uh, hey, Jeff, do you know if Joanne is coming? Um, I expected that she was coming. I don't know if she had a problem Getting into the Zoom meeting, I sent an uh, email. Um, you mentioned the link was updated, and I didn't hear anything back from her. So I guess I wouldn't worry about her attendance at this point. Well, let's do, um, we can do a couple more things and kill a little bit more time before we have to go to the Resilient Roads Committee. Just so if she is planning to attend, a little bit more closer to the time. So the next item here is I, appointments it's called, Town Treasure Selection Committee. Uh, I don't know if everyone's aware of what's happened on the Treasure Selection Committee. No. Okay, so what happened is we had Ryan, um, who is the son of uh, Ed Vegan on the committee, but the committee <clears throat> felt like there was conflict of interest with certainly you know, it could be perceived as conflict of interest pretty easily. So certain members of the committee felt strongly that we needed to have Ryan off the committee or Ed to withdraw his his application. So it was decided that the best thing to do is not have Ryan on the committee. So Ryan agreed to step off and Jane Burroughs has agreed to take his place if the select board agrees to do so. So because it is the responsibility of the select board to appoint the members of the selection committee, that's why it's before you today. So there you go. Jane Burroughs will replace uh, Ryan on the committee. She's not going to have to do too much, but there is going to be a couple more meetings when we go through the um, applicants, resumes, etc. And it is valuable to have um, a CPA on that, asking the questions that need to be asked. So there you go. So I guess I'm asking you to approve Jane Burroughs if you feel comfortable with that so we can move ahead with having a CPA on the committee. So moved. We have a second. second. We have a second. Amy seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Jane Burroughs is now on the Treasure Selection Committee. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, the other thing is, the next item is J. It's the warrant. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we would need to have me sign the warrant. So we need a motion to have that. If everyone's comfortable with that, and if they've looked over the warrant, 
Um, I'm comfortable signing. So moved. I'll uh, moving it. We need a second. I'll do. It. I'll second it. Oh, John seconded it. All those in favor of that signing the warrant, please say aye. 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 Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could go ahead with item D, which is the work session on 2022 town meeting and town forum, um, which, which would take care of some time. Which I think we should do in case Joanne Garden wants to tune in to the three um, items. Two other um, So, on the work session for 2022 town meeting and town forum, what is there specifically that we need to discuss, Bruce, or whoever else has input? Well, the, the first thing you would have discussed is the input you got from the public. Yep. So exactly. absent that, yep. it's sort of whatever you might want to do in terms of setting up for the, the next forum, the actual forum. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Does anybody have any thoughts about questions or points that aren't clear? Because that's basically what happens in the town forum is residents ask questions and we try to field those questions to the best of our ability, and sometimes we have to go look something up or figure out our position on certain issues. Um, for instance, on the fire truck, which I think we probably ought to talk about because um, we've got Paul Ware here and Chief Ty Rowland, and that's something that um, they would anticipate some questions on, and I would too. Where are we at on that um, item? Is what we're asking is, there's two thoughts on that actually. Well, there's a couple things that we should talk about. One is, it's on the town morning. It's, uh, how much was it, Bruce? 130,000? 133, 333. Okay. Um, I'm in full support of this. I think it's a modest ask for the town considering the amount of money that the truck costs. And I'm in support of taking it out of the capital reserve. Um, but what does everyone think about that? Do you want to finance? Do you think the finance should be on the question? Are we saying it? Are we asking the town residents to okay take it out of capital reserve? Is it not? Isn't that the question? That is the question. All right. I think we've already said what we think about it. We, <clears throat> we put it before the members of the public to vote on right. it. I'm just trying to kill time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Ty's here so you could ask some questions so Paul. So if you had any questions, ask them. I don't have any. Um, I just thought it was a, something town residents would ask about, but we don't have any. We have the Gigan, I see. Ed, you had some questions on the truck. Can, um, can you hear us? You talking about the fire truck? Yeah, Ed actually emailed me some questions about that, and I forgot to call him back. So maybe I could ask answer his questions now. But he's, I can see him on the Zoom, but I don't, I, I don't think he's hearing us or me. Um, the question was, doesn't show up as an asset for the town, and the answer is, it won't because. We're basically just giving the money to the fire department. Um, is everyone clear on that? It's not a town asset. It's it's going to the fire department. We're just giving them the money. So um, that was the answer to Ed's question. So anyway, I guess we should move on to other questions that we could have on the town meeting warning. Does anybody have any? I don't. I don't hear any. Um, so maybe we should move to the shade tree plant. What do you think, folks? We've got.
got sandals. We have Sandal K here, um, alias Paul, or Paul alias Sandal. <laughs> We've got Jeff Queto here, and we don't know if Joanne Garten is going to tune in. So I'd say we start the tree um, discussion. What do you think, Jeff? I think that's a good idea. Joanne realized that it might we might start early anyways, so I'm assuming okay. she's not coming. Okay, so um, you and Paul are up, and let's talk about the the shade tree preservation plan. Sounds good. So uh, I think Bruce put it out on the website. Well, I'm sure he did, and I guess we. Paul and I uh, would be glad to answer any questions uh, that you have about it. Um, I think we're planning the hearing, which would be March 7th. Um, and that's a hearing between the tree warden and the select board to receive comments from the public on the draft plan, which I think has to be available at least 10 days uh, before the hearing, if I recall correctly. Um, we, we sat in on your last meeting. Um, and after that, I did do some revisions to the plan, including completion of uh, the three appendices that have tables indicating which trees um, are town planted trees, um, which trees are in zones where all of the trees would be considered shade trees, quote unquote, under the uh, statute. And a third table that would be a tabulation of any reaches of town road where there are no shade trees. Um, and as, as we mentioned before, um, we'd start out uh, with basically um, any trees that are four inch diameter or larger would be considered shade trees and subject to the jurisdiction of the, uh, the tree warden. So the public may have objections to the plan. Um, they might recommend um, some changes to the tables um, to include more trees or fewer trees. Um, but um, if there are any questions, uh, we'd be glad to, glad to answer them now. Yeah, I do. I got a couple. And uh, everyone does, actually. So go ahead, go ahead um, Carl. I think your hand was up first. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, it looks looks like a, a good report. Thank you all for, for pulling that together. Um, very comprehensive, very clear. The, the only disconnect for me is on the appendices uh, C and D. Uh, they are named in the report. Um, the appendix on the, the beautiful parts of town uh, has uh, some places listed. The, the ugly parts of town appendix is, is empty. Um, and it, um, it, it's just, there's no explanation for yeah. why areas are included in the one appendix or, or the other. And I was wondering, you know, maybe the names of the appendix appendices, those two are clear enough as to what they're about that you don't need to describe that, but maybe in the appendices themselves, you could put some information as to why those designations were given to the areas for the, the gorgeous parts of town. Uh, will there be a map that goes along with this? I didn't see a map. Um, no, I, I don't think there's any plan right now to have a map. Um, we've talked to Joanne about um, having that kind of information digitally available on a map sort of um, like our ash tree inventory information, adding another layer that would show the zones in town uh, where all of the trees are protected basically um, and the exclusion areas. Um, we could add some language in the appendices 
I mean, there's some in the, in the text, certainly. Uh, the reason the um, ugly, quote unquote, part of town uh, <laughs> stuff is blank, um, that was sort of just a placeholder in case people uh, wanted to present information to the select board and the tree warden that uh, justified not including trees on that section of road or if, a, if there aren't any trees there now and they wanted it to be um, indicated in, in the table, um, that's a possibility too. But um, it's sort of something that we're looking at as being organic you know, and coming back to the select board annually or biannually and adding things to the table. Um, we did the work in the center um, under the uh, Arbor Day grant uh, to plant trees and we did the hedgerow work and that's why that's reflected in uh, the table that uh, includes trees that are smaller than four inches. Um, so. And I'm, I'm sure that you have from the extensive paperwork that you've generated in, in this project and the grant applications and so on. I'm sure you have language already as to why the center area uh, was singled out, why the area by the school was singled out. Uh, you could just put that in the appendix for, for each area and it would, would help people understand it better. <laughs> okay, I got a question that's in line with Judas to start with. So Judith, you were thinking of a map that was specific to the areas that are going to be designated as shade tree areas? Um, yeah, just so that it's, you know, understood. And I guess I would, you know, make an exception to Carl's characterization of ugly versus gorgeous parts of town. I think all of these small are beautiful. Um, so, but it might be um, helpful just, you know, similar to the um, ash trees, you know, just having plots. I mean, on the existing, obviously, maps that we have, but maybe just plotting on that. Yeah. Um, that yeah. was what I, don't, I don't disagree with that concept at all. But what I do, what I'm reading into this is you could actually make a blanket um, policy where all the trees over a certain size on all the roads would be under the jurisdiction of the tree ward. Is that, is that how I'm reading that? Is that correct? So. That's basically yeah. what this is. Right. So there wouldn't be a map because everything would be designated as a shade tree in the town right away over four inches. Is that right? That's right. Um, I, I'm not saying I support that concept because I don't actually, but I do, des I do support the concept in certain areas and towns and certain trees designated as shade trees. But if you're going to make that blanket um, rule where all trees over four inches are under the jurisdiction of the tree one that serves circumventing the statute that they changed, which gave back some control over trees that are in um, on landowners' land that are within the town right away. Did it not? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <clears throat> go ahead, Paul. Yeah, but not for that reason, I don't believe. <clears throat> Uh, you know that there was you know, lots of having to do with landowners cutting trees in a town right away. And then yeah. the legislature changed the statute, just gave back some control of trees in the town right away that are on landowners' land. Right? Is that correct? Well, by default, yes. Right. So now if you <laughs> enact this rule that it looks like it's before us, that gives back all the control of the trees in the town right away, over four inches to the tree warden. Yeah, which is the way it was before. That's the way it was before, right. But I'm saying the statute got changed for a reason. And I know some of the landowners that were impacted by that old rule. It went to court and um, the landowner won. Because they cut trees. There was a farmer actually that had a field. I know all about it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, as a farmer that sometimes cuts trees within the town right away, that are dead, et cetera, et cetera, I'm a little resistant to making a blanket rule that would circumvent the statute. That's all. Well, you know, it hasn't come to the point where we haven't had the hearing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just saying. 
Seth, can you uh, can you describe in brief what happened with that farmer? I don't think everybody knows about this issue. Oh, he had a field and a lot of trees along the edge of the road. He cleared the trees because they were on his land, but they were actually in the town right away. And at the end of the, and the, somebody came along, town, state, whatever, and they sued him for, I'm not sure how much, maybe Paul can tell us, but it was like a million bucks or something. It was expensive. He was a farmer. They went to court on it and didn't the landowner win? He, because the town said it was unsightly, it was in a view shed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, I thought the landowner won. He was a dairy farmer, like myself. He thought he was improving his field, which he probably was. So that's that's along the short that I know of. Now, maybe I don't have all the facts correct. Maybe Paul knows. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know <clears throat> all the background facts to that, and I haven't kept up with what's happened lately. <clears throat> the last time I knew it hadn't well, finished. Know, but wait, wait till Paul gets done, and we'll hear from you. Okay. Okay, Paul, go uh, for it. So the reason for having that in the first place is so that you don't have <clears throat> people who own the land uh, indiscriminately cutting stuff that is potentially affecting the roadway, you know, in the right of way. <clears throat> so it's just a matter of how you discern whether uh, the <clears throat> person with the trees <clears throat> should be able to do any darn thing they want, even though it may affect the town's right of way. Yeah. In, in a less than desirable way, let's say, uh, or whether they work things out with, with in this case, the tree wood. Uh, you know, and it's, we run into these kind of things every day, it seems like. It's, it depends on your point of view, uh, whether it's a perceived problem or a real problem. And I think a lot of that de depends on if you've got a tree warden that's out to get the, <laughs> get into trouble, why, you know, you could have issues. If you don't, well, then they're probably doing the town a big favor. <clears throat> okay, so thank you, Paul, on that. Let, Judith, you, you probably have some information. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to clarify something follow up on something that you had said, um, Seth, you yeah. had suggested that this plan is yeah. in contravention of the new statute. That's incorrect. The statute specifically provides for the creation of these plans and provides for um, the mechanism that and the procedure that is spelled out in this plan. So the statute Whereas before you didn't have to adopt a plan, now you have to adopt a plan, and this is what has been done. And that's perfectly um, consistent with and compliant with the new statute that was enacted in response to that legislation. So I just wanted to clarify that what's being proposed um, is consistent with the statute. The other thing, the other question I had regarding the plan um, is looking at page four, um, when you're talking about the processes, um, so processes, excuse me, processes not inconsistent with 24 BSA chapter 67 for removal of, and you say section A, disease, dying, or dead shade trees, and B, any shade trees that create a hazard to public safety impacted disease or insect control program. And then the, you kind of have a paragraph underneath saying consistent with 25504, the tree warden will authorize without a public hearing the removal of shade trees that fit those three categories. What are the three categories? Because you just had two headings. So I, I wasn't sure what that referred to. And it looks like we're missing a category. Is it disease, dying, or dead? Is that the three categories? <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, I don't, wouldn't say so. Uh, that okay, that so would be one of them. Oh, I think it's under B. Um, yeah. 
And those three categories of creating a public hazard, okay. disease trees, or trees removed to comply with state or federal law. So, so that, is that, that should be clear. Okay, so is that whole paragraph actually part of B? Should that be part of B instead of it's kind of hanging out on its own? I think so. Does that look right, Joanne? I see that you're here now. Yeah, Ooh. hi everyone. I'm sorry to drop into the Zoom world, um, but I'm Joanne Garten. I work with the Urban and Community Forestry Program. Um, and it's great to see all of you. I've met all of you. Um, but the A, um, A and B, those words are actually from the statute itself. So I think where it starts to say consistent with VSA 2504, the tree wouldn't will authorize and then gets into three categories. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but I'm guessing that that the East Montpelier Committee wrote that and either it's kind of a typo and should say two referring to A and B <laughs> or um, which are verbatim, I think, from the statute. Or I don't know. I don't know why it says three. That might have just been. Yeah, I, 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 I think no, two. I think both yeah, under yeah. those paragraphs are responding to the two A and B, the language that's in statute. So I think the two paragraphs that are under A and under B should be indented to reflect the fact that they are responding individually to A and B, if that makes any sense. So that last, last paragraph uh, that Judith was noting should be indented so it's clear that it's uh, a response to item B. Okay. And that's the three things, public safety, yeah. disease, or state law. Those yeah. are the three categories. And similarly, similarly, Jeff, you're saying that the paragraph that begins a tree warden will identify diseased, that that paragraph is referring specifically to disease dying or dead shade trees. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. That clears it up. Okay, any more questions for Joanne or Jeff or Paul? Um, will the hearing process be, and maybe I glossed over this um, and might have, might have missed it, like the hearing process. Where's that spelled out? Um. Yeah, what do you look forward to in March? Do we set the date for that tonight? You can if you want to. It's your hearing, so yeah. So the hearing um, could be on the March 7th um, meeting. Is that correct? That's what you're saying in your select board memo. Yes. That, that was the first date that we could reasonably fit. We couldn't do it on the 28th. As Jeff said, you need a 10-day notice period. Uh, so the first meeting you have coming up that we could do a hearing with was the 7th. It doesn't have to be on the 7th. It can be any date you want. Yeah, I'm not going to be here on the 7th, but I guess I can zoom in. Doesn't matter to zoom in anyway. Uh, what is the rest of the board, what, or what does everyone like to do as far as that hearing goes? The seventh works can work. Yeah, that sounds works fine to me. me. Sounds fine to me. It's fine with me. me too. All right. Do we need to, no, we aren't, do we need to make a motion to bring this to the public in a hearing or we just do that by consensus? I would just do it by consensus, but I would ask you to decide if you want to have the hearing before the meeting, i.e. at six o'clock or something like that, or do you want to have it at 630 and uh, start the meeting after? Um, I think we would need to make a motion. Um, the statute provides that the tree warden and the legislative body of the, of the municipality may adopt a shade tree preservation plan. Um, so I think maybe we need to approve it or authorize it well ultimately yes but right now we're just setting a hearing to get in okay so right. after, okay got it so after the hearing in response to the hearing comments we would do that okay got it great thank you um do we have a lot of stuff on the march 7th meeting? don't we have to 
create the new board and everything and uh, do any appointments or anything or what? You will definitely have the organizational aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that you won't. <laughs> the March 7th meeting is actually quicker than normal. Uh, usually we have a little more time uh, in March. This will be as early as it gets. Uh, so I don't know that we'll have all the appointments ready to go at that point. But yeah, that's that meeting is for the organizational thing. It's usually when we have the state police in. I don't think they're going to make it on the 7th. I think they'll be there on the 21st. Uh, so do it on the 7th. Yeah, there isn't that much going. Yeah. So the question is what time? So I, I'd say we do it during our meeting. Don't start the meeting early. Start the meeting at 6.30. And have the hearing at seven or something, whatever. I agree. Is, yeah. is there a problem with holding that type of hearing the way that we held our forum tonight and just holding it? And if nobody comes talking about other select board business, do they have to be separate in time? I think you probably would in this case, since it's a mandated hearing, you would close the hearing and move on with life if nobody showed up. Yeah. Okay. Which are worth fine. I think that there will be some comments. I mean, I've got some. I so. Yeah. I, I also think it'll be. Um, I think it's. I think it's important, and I think we'll have comments. If not from the general public, it'll be from us. So, I'm anxious to attend the hearing and ask questions and et cetera, et cetera. So. I say we move it. We have the hearing at seven or whatever in our meeting, embedded our meeting, and move on. So that works for everybody else. I'll be there. Yep. I will be somehow. Me too. Okay. That and works so, for Paul and yep. It just, we just need to, when we're noticing it, we need to make sure to publish the plan. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, I think that does the preservation plan. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your work. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into that. Um, <laughs> now we don't have our forum. Is do we have anybody that wants to talk, ask questions on the forum? That's tuning in. And they don't have to be residents, as Carl said. So I'm not seeing that. Um, so I want to thank Paul, who's already gone, and Ty Rowan for tuning in. Oh, there's Paul. Thank you, Paul, for being on hand to answer questions. We will have another forum at the next meeting, which is, what's the date on that? February 28th? Yes. Yeah. February 28th, we'll have another forum. Hope it's better attended. Um, but anyway, I guess that's it for that. That's it for the forum. That's it for the Shade Creek Preservation Plan discussion. Um, gee, have we done, done the whole thing? Other than the other business part. Right. But we didn't have any other business. Town administrator report, zoning administrator report. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading it. Um, appointments, we did it. Warrants are done. Town administrator report. B trans excess weight notice. Do you have anything to talk about on that, Bruce? No, it's just same old, same old. Dude. Yeah. Then the rest of it is is uh, the dates. The Planning Commission has their hearing on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All done. Done. Okay. Really, that's all that's going on. The DRB yeah, has a very right rare here. town meeting meeting, but that's how it worked out. Mm -hmm. And town meeting. Okay. So I don't see anything too exciting on that. Anybody else have any comments, thoughts on 
piece. Everyone's looking a little bored. Um, <laughs> Maybe in April we can begin to um, invite input on how to spend our COVID funds or talk about how to elicit input on that. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Judith, because I had a couple questions about that ARPA fund. Can I ask them, Bruce? Go for it. So I was reading, you know, various articles in the paper about various towns because the rules are out and it sounds like they're allowing more use of the <coughs> ARPA fund than they originally thought. So one of the things I was reading into it was I was thinking about was the town roads or the town garage. It looked like that could be an approved use. Am I wrong? So at this point, I would say you're still wrong on that, but not wrong on that, but uh, you're not right on the, the concept. However, what we're still waiting for is VLCT to finish its vetting of the very intriguing concept that we can take a one-time charge off on revenues uh, to the tune of $10 million dollars which of course is more than we have. But what that implies is that we can take the entire ARPA funding as lost revenues due to the pandemic. And what VLCT is trying to track down is what the backstory on that is. Uh, FEMA did this for um, storm categories a few years ago where they gave a automatic 5% for any administrative work rather than having to prove it, you could just take it. And the state pushed that hard. We accepted it along with every other town. And then on the backside, we actually had to prove more. This was in 2017 for that wind event we had to prove more than we did from the 2011 events. So it was a <clears throat> apparent good news thing that turned into a nightmare. And what VLCT is trying to prove to its own satisfaction and then give us the, the end result is whether that's going to happen again, uh, where it appears that there's a, essentially a free money checkoff but there will be a reporting requirement that will essentially take away the, the value of the, of the free revenues. And so they're still advising that you do nothing. Hang on, because there may be very good news coming. We may be able to essentially free this money from the bulk of the federal rules, but we don't know for sure, for sure yet. Okay, so that's good advice, and thank you for that, Bruce. But I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm on my radar, or our radar is the town garage. I think that's an important project. If we can funnel the money towards that, it would be great. So, so basically, what what I was implying was that if we get that check off, you can funnel that money to your capital reserve fund. And yeah. hold it for projects like what you're talking about. Yes, right. And that's what it, it won't have to meet any of the so-called categories right. that you've seen so so far. Right, and that would be fantastic. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. Yeah. Does that work for you, Judith? Okay. Okay. So, um, is there anything else that we need to go over? Uh, not seeing much on the select board memo here. Um, anybody else have anything that's burning, a burning desire to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It looks like we could call the meeting. Is that accurate? So moved. <laughs> it's usually called a motion to adjourn, a gentle reminder, but um, no one seems to be 
in that mode. So I'll just wait. I second that motion to adjourn that John made. <laughs> he didn't really make it, but he kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All of the favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye and bye. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Good to see everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah you too. To, good way to spend it, but we are getting done early. So Yay. Bye. bye. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Thank you.